Um, go with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Um, Isaiah chapter 43. Um, let, me, let, me, let me say this to um, this man of God. Boy, the, the worship this morning so aligns with what the Lord laid on my heart to share that is unbelievable. And you didn't even ask me what you're going to be preaching about. <laughs> he just allowed God to lead and allow God to move and have his way. So Isaiah chapter 43. Um, pray for me as we go into the word of the Lord. Let's just read and then let's allow God to move and have his way in our midst. And it begins at 43, verse 16. And let me know you're there by saying amen when you get there. Amen. amen. I'm going to read and then we're going to allow God. It said, thus saith the Lord, who makes a way in the sea a path in the mighty waters, who bring forth chariots and horse, army and warrior. They lay down and they cannot rise. They are extinguished quench like a wick. Remember not the former things, but consider the things, nor consider the things of whole. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Come on, say a new thing. A new thing. Say it again, say a new thing. a new thing. Now it springs forth, and do you not see or perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostrich, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. I give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I form for myself, watch this, that they may declare my praise. Lord have mercy. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, you're wonderful, God, as we go into your word. I am praying that you would speak through me, God, so we can say what you would have me to say. It is about, about you and not about us, God. We want to hear from you, God. We want, God, just, just your presence to rain down in this place this morning so we can just glorify you and magnify you. So we thank you for who you are. Felix dies and Felix moves out of the way because I have nothing to say if you don't speak. So Holy Spirit, we need to hear from you this morning so we can align with you, God. So bless, we pray for preaching power, a fresh anointing, God. Have your way in our midst. In your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. The God who did that can surely do this. Yeah, yeah. Come on, point out, turn it out and say, other neighbor. Say, other neighbor. The God who did that. Yeah, now do me a favor. Point to them when you say that. Point to them. The God who did that. Yeah, and then point to yourself and say, he can do this. Yeah, one more time. Say, the God who did that can surely do this. Amen, amen. I don't know if you believe that this morning, but we're going to walk through the word of God and allow God to move and have his way in our midst. I don't, I'm having so okay, good. Here's what I want y'all to lock into this. God works on our behalf so we can praise him for who he is, not for what he does. Come on, does that make sense? I want you to, I want you to let that, that, that thought plant in your heart and in your spirit as you walk through the teaching this morning, as you walk through the word of God, that you need to understand it's very, very important. God works on our behalf so we can praise him for who he is, not for what he does. As we look at the text that's in front of us this morning, here's what you're going to find and here's what you're going to observe. This text is almost a replication of the deliverance of the children of Israel from the land of Egypt many, many years prior to Isaiah 43. Here's what you need to know. Um, in the book of Exodus around chapter 8, well, beginning chapter 1 all the way through midway toward the end of Exodus, what you find is you find the children of Israel in slavery, in bondage in the land of Egypt. Now, here's what's interesting about their enslavement in the land of Egypt. They found themselves in captivity for over 400 years. Come on, y'all, that's a long time. And after 400 years of being in captivity, God raises up Moses, and he gives birth to Moses, and he brings Moses on the scene. And here's what he says to Moses. He says to Moses, I want to empower you or anoint you to go to Pharaoh to tell him to let my people go. Now, the story doesn't end there, but here's what he said. I want you to tell him to let my people go that they may serve me, and depending on where you're reading, that they may serve me on this mountain. Now, what I like about the word, if you were to do some etymological work or background work on the word serve, you would find that a better translation would be this, 
let them go that they may worship me. Oh, come on, say amen. Because here, here's the thing I want you all to understand. The Israelites were not just being let go for the mere pleasure of being let go. Come on, say amen, y'all. There was divine intention attached to their liberation. God was bringing them out so they can be reunited with him. They can be connected to him so they can worship him, so they can declare his praise, they can declare his glory, and they can make his name holy again. The problem with those Israelites subsequent to their deliverance is the same problem that you and I have. God delivers us, God sets us free, and we forget the reason why we have been delivered and why we have been set free, and we find ourselves back in the same situation that God delivered us from. Come on, do I have any witnesses here? This was the pattern with the Israelites. It was the same pattern that they found themselves in. God would deliver them, and because of their lack of obedience to the reason for the deliverance, they would find themselves in captivity again and again and again. And so now, moving all the way forward, we find ourselves in the book of Isaiah, and what's going on contextually in the book of Isaiah is the Israelites now have found themselves in exile in Babylon. They find themselves in Babylonian captivity, and simply because of their disobedience to what God had empowered, or God delivered them for, or what God has called them to do. Now, fast forward in, Isaiah comes on the scene, and Isaiah, the prophet, not only prophesies the captivity, but he also prophesies about the deliverance that's going to take place for the children of Israel. So when you get to chapter, chapter 43, this is what some scholars refer to as Deutero Isaiah or the second writing of the book of Isaiah where Isaiah now is speaking what God is about to do because just like the Israelites in Egypt for 400 years, God raises up Moses, God now is about to deliver them again. Come on, does anybody know God can do it again? Oh, I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody in here. He, he can do it again. So as opposed to raising up a Moses, this time he raises up this fellow by the name of Cyrus for his purposes. And Cyrus's commission is to overthrow, God's going to raise him up to overthrow the Babylonian empire so the people of God can be released for the same reason that he released them in the book of Exodus. Now, what's critical about the text that we're about to see, Isaiah's prophesying about to say what God is going to do, but before the people are released, there's four things that Isaiah need them to know about God before God sets them on their way. Number one, his desire is that they know God. Come on, say they need to know God. Secondly, they needed to understand God. Come on, say they need to understand God. Thirdly, they needed to trust God. Come on, say trust God. And fourthly, they needed to praise God. Come on, say praise God. So as we look at the text, I want to take a moment just to point out these four things in the text. So we see ourselves on the precipice or on the beginning of this year, 2019. We don't make the same mistakes that we made in 2018, that this year would be different. Come on. This year, God would be where God so rightly deserved to be, and he gets the glory that he so justly deserves. So as we look at the text, I want to begin here. I want to begin, first of all, that God's call to the Israelites is that they needed to know God. And I want to say to you this morning, and I, as well as I'm saying to myself, we need to know who God is. So repeat after me. Say, self, I need to know who God is. One more time, say, self, self. I, need I need to know who God is. Who God is. Now, I'm going to move through this pretty swiftly because we're going to talk about it on Wednesday and dig even deeper. And I really sense the Lord is saying, don't release this so quick because there's something that's going on here in the atmosphere that we need not miss. So look with me at verse 16, ver um, part A. Notice how it opens up. It says, thus saith the Lord... And in my translation, the ESV, the Lord is capitalized. It's spelled out in complete capital letters. If yours is the same way, say amen. amen. Now, here's what you need to know about that capitalization that's there in the text. What it is is the tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H. -H. Come on, say Yahweh. 
And so what it means, it means the Lord or Yahweh, it is the proper name for the God of Israel. It is the personal name that is most frequently designated in Scripture, okay? So the focus of the usage of this is his sure existence and lock into this his relationship with people. The mistake a lot of translators make and the mistake you and I make a lot of time when we read Lord, we just hear ruler, we just hear person that's in charge, transliterated in Greek from the Septuagint, we hear Adonai and we minimize Lord. But notice what the text says, it starts out by saying, don't make a mistake in identifying who it is that's speaking to you. I wish I had somebody here. This is not some ruler or some king, I'm talking Yahweh, I'm talking Jehovah. Jehovah Elohim. I'm talking the I am that I am. I wish I had somebody in here. He said, let the record reflect. Isaiah says, I want you to hear the voice of God, the one who is and was and always shall be. Come on. The one who didn't start because he had nowhere to come from. You've heard me say this. The one who has nowhere to go because he's already everywhere. Come on. The mother to the motherless, the father to the fatherless, bread to the hungry, the provider. Come on. The, the, the great I am, the Alpha and the Omega. Let the record reflect the creator of the universe. Come on. I need somebody in here. Thus he says, set the Lord. And you need to know who he is. Come on. The I am that I am. Do you know him this morning? Come on, do you know him? Do you know him? Nouns can't describe him. Come on. The verbs break down when talking about his works. I wish I had somebody in here that knows who I'm talking about. The Yahweh, the Elohim, the El Shaddai, the Sitkunu, the Nisi, the great God. Thus, Isaiah says, the Lord, you got to know who he is. You got to know who he is. Turn to him and say, neighbor, you need to know who he is. Come on, say, you need to know who he is. Not only, not only, not only do you need to know who he is, but you need to know what he does or what he did. Come on. Look at the text. Look at the text. Because a lot of us claim to know who he is, but we have forgotten what he's done. I wish I had somebody in here. Notice what it says. Thus saith the Lord, and watch this, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings forth chariots and horse, army and warrior. Watch this. They lie down and they cannot rise. They are extinguished and quench like a wick. The author uses a series of participial descriptives to talk about who God really is and what God has done. So it's like this. It's almost as if Isaiah is saying, hey, you guys are in exile right now, and you're depressed, and you're despondent, and your spirit is gone. Come with me back to the exodus. I wish I had somebody in here. Come with me back to the place of deliverance. Let me tell you what God is about to do, but also let me tell you who he is by what he did. Now, notice this. Notice what the text says. Look at these verbs. He makes a way. Where? Yeah, come on. He makes a way in the sea. Listen to what they say. Remember with me when the Israelites were delivered from Egypt, when their backs were against the wall and the ocean was in front of them, the Red Sea was in front of them, God was the one that parted that Red Sea. I wish I had somebody in here. It wasn't the fact that Moses raised his staff and the sea parted. There was nothing in the staff absent God. I wish I had somebody in here. So Moses, I mean the author, Isaiah wants you to realize that God is the one who parted the sea. Not did God part, not only did God the sea, but he says he made a way, come on, in the mighty waters. You lock into this. Watch what he does. He brings forth chariots and horse army and warriors. Now, now most of you may think, well, that wasn't God. That was Pharaoh. You're probably saying that was Pharaoh. And three days after he released those people, he changed his mind and he decided to go after them. No, no, no. God said, let the record reflect. It wasn't Pharaoh who made the decision to go after them. Remember with me, before I sent Moses, here's what I said to him. I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Y'all not, don't, don't miss this. I will hold Pharaoh in restraint. And when the time is right, I am going to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So lock into this. As the people were being released, God said to Pharaoh, not yet. 
And when the time was right, here's what he said to Pharaoh. Okay, you can go now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like God saying to Pharaoh, I am the one. I am the commander of armies. I don't care what your rank is in the military. I don't care what your rank is in presidential estate. I am still the Lord of lords. I am the king of kings. I tell the sun to rise. I tell the moon to go down. I tell the earth to rotate on its axis. I'm in charge. Pharaoh, you can go now. And watch this. I didn't tell Pharaoh to go so they can capture my people. I tell him go so I can kill him. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. <laughs> watch the text. He brings forth chariots and horse and army and warriors. And watch this. I love these verbs. They lie down and they cannot rise. Don't, don't miss that. They lie down and they cannot rise. One more time. They lie down. And they cannot, I'm going to say it one more time. Yeah. They lie down and they cannot rise. I wish y'all knew Hebrew because the imperfective tense of that verb, what it's really saying in the imperfect tense, when they lie down, the picture is this, is God has his foot on them. Yeah. <laughs> and here's what he says, they cannot rise. Yeah. They don't have the power to move the foot of God. Y'all not hearing me so they can get up. I wish I had somebody in here. Because when God puts your enemy down and places his feet on them, they cannot rise because they're not strong enough to move the foot of God. I wish I had somebody in here so they can get up. And here's what he says, I did that. You need to know what I did. And then look at what he says. He says, they lie down and they cannot get up. And then he says, and then when I'm ready, they are extinguished like a wick. I wish that candle was lit because you get the picture. They lie down and I got my foot on them. And when my people have made it safely across, I put them in the middle of the water and then I go like this. And they're done, they're done, they're done, and they're done. So I extinguish them like a wick. Now, the premise of all of this, understand this in the text, and don't miss this when I talk about who God is. Here's what God trying to get the people to understand in taking them back into the place. Don't celebrate what I did. I didn't do that because I can. Listen to me carefully. I did it because I care for you. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, there's a difference. There's a difference. I did it because I loved you. I did it because you are my people. And if you know anything about knowing who God is, and you know who God is, he's the God of the Bible, but don't focus so much on what he can do. Oh, I wish I had. I wish I had. Let me go here. Look at the second thing. Come on, say, know God. Secondly, understand God. Now, listen to this. Never restrict God to working in only the ways he did in the past. Excuse me a second. That's for me. That's my shout. Watch the text. Verse 18 says this. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read verse 18, I was troubled. I was perplexed because after Isaiah said, let me tell you who God is, and let me tell you what God did, I would fully expect the text to say, don't forget what he did. Oh, come on. I, I know you would expect the same thing if you read that. You would expect the author to say next, don't forget what he just did. I'm reminding you of what he did so you don't forget, but the text flips on us and it switches on us because notice what it says. Don't make the mistake of locking in to what he did yesterday. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. He says this, remember not the former things. It's like he put him there and he says, look at what I did for you. And, but understand now, you're not in Egypt anymore. You're in exile in Babylon and it's a completely different situation. So don't look for me to work in Babylon like I worked. In, I wish I had somebody in here. 
let me go here with y'all. My problem and your problem is this. When God works a certain way, being the inveterate person that I am, what that means is being the, the pattern or the routine individual that I am. If God works a certain way, my, the mistake I make is I make an idol of the way God worked and I worship the idol, come on, in the mode that God worked. You don't believe me, check the entirety of the whole testament. God released those people to worship him, but they were focused on the release and missed the worship. I wish I had... I wish I had somebody in here. So when you hear testimonies, here's the testimony. God brought me through. God parted the Red Sea. God fed us manna. Matter of fact, they were so locked into that the Ark of the Covenant itself became an idol in that within the idol, it contains replicas of what God did, not who he was. Y'all not hearing me. Come on, y'all not hearing me. And so here's what happens. Because God did a certain thing yesterday, doesn't mean that he has to do the same thing today. So what he says, don't focus on what I did, focus on who I am. And because here's what this looks like. If I was broke yesterday and God put a check in the mailbox, here's what I do every day. I'm waiting for my check, y'all. It ain't came yet, but it's coming, y'all. And every day, I keep leaving Babylonian captivity, going back to Egypt, looking for the same miracle as if God must do what he, I wish I had somebody here. And the principle of God is provision. It's care, not how he did what he did. Come on, come on. Talk to me. You've heard the story. Let me say this real quick about the man that was drowning. Y'all heard this. And he was saying, Lord, save me. And God sent a boat, and he let the boat go by because he said, I'm waiting for God to come save me. Then the Lord sent a helicopter. He let the helicopter go by. I'm waiting for God to save me. God sent the Marine, the Navy. He let the Navy go by. He said, I'm waiting for God to save me. Well, guess what? He drowned. Then when he got to heaven, he said, God, where were you? And God said, did you look in the boat? Did you look in the helicopter? Come on. Did you look? Are you with me? And this is the danger. This is why God has to say to you, and he has to say to me, 2018 looked a certain way. Don't look for me in 2019 the same way you saw me in 2018. Are you with me? Because if you look for me in 2019, the way I moved in 2018, you risk missing me. Come on now. So don't lock into the former thing. Provision in 2018 looks different. I wish I had somebody in here. Let me go here. Service in 2018 looks a lot different than it. I wish I had somebody in here. So here's what he says. Here's what he says. Forget the former things. It's not about what God did. It's about who God is. Oh, I need somebody in here. I need somebody in here. So lock into this. Our faith should never be focused on what God did in the past, but what he can do when? Oh, come on, come on. Turn your neighbor. Say out to your neighbor. Say, come on, tell him. Say, neighbor, our faith should never be focused on what God did in the past, but what he can do now. I'm almost done, y'all. I'm almost done now. So, so here it is. I need to know God. I need to understand God. And if he's telling me to forget the former things, I need to know what it means to trust. Yeah. Y'all get it. Yeah. The God who did that. I wish I had somebody. Can surely do yeah, yeah. Come on, y'all help me see that. Come on. The God who did that can surely do what? And here's what Isaiah is trying to get the, the Israelites in, in, in exile, in Babylonian captivity to understand. Hey, I took y'all back to Egypt to tell you what God did. And let me tell you, while you're in exile today, the same God that did that back then can also do this. But look at what the text says. It says here um, in verse 19, Behold, he says, I am doing what kind of a thing? I wish I had somebody in here. Now, y'all got to get this. You have to get this. Behold, I am doing what? 
Because here's what God wants us to understand. And let me slow down. And I want you all to hear me carefully. What God, the reason, the reason we missed God in yesterday is because we took our eyes off of God and we focused on what God did. So listen to what we said. I'm believing God for. Let me tell you what that means. The for meant you're waiting for him to do something else. You're not believing him. So we're serving him, not for who he is, but for what he does. Understand with me, deliverance is not about what he does. It's about, yeah. Moses, I need you to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go, that they may do what? Serve me. Not that they can dwell in my blessings. Not that I can always provide for them. He does that by default. Y'all not hearing me. Come on. <laughs> that's a mode. That's, that's by, listen to what it says in Matthew. Consider the lilies, right? Consider the birds. They don't work. They don't toil. They don't labor. God's default mode. Pro I wish I had somebody. His default mode provides for them, right? So, so notice what the text says. It says here, behold, I am doing a new thing. Come on, saying he's doing a new thing. And then he says, the problem with a lot of us is that we can't see it. He says, it's springing forth, and do you not perceive it, or you can't perceive it? Here's what I'm saying. In 2019, God don't want us to make the same mistakes relationally with him that we did back in 2018. And if you focus on the hand of God and not the heart of God, lock into this, you won't see it. Y'all not ready for this. You're not ready for this. Look at what he says. Here's a new thing. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, you have to read this through the lens of Exodus. Here's what Exodus sounds like. I'm going to part the Red Sea, Right? So in the water, I'm going to put a road in the water. Look at the text. In 2019, on the land, I'm going to put water on the land. Y'all missing this. Y'all missing this. Yesterday, I did this. Tomorrow, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it differently. Are you with me? And, and if you make the mistake of locking into how I did it yesterday and what worked yesterday, You'll miss the hand of God moving forward into today. Does this make sense? Come on. Does this make sense? So I need us to trust God. I need us to trust God, right? So, so here, here's what that means. Here's what that means. Our trust of God has to be in the fact that understand God loves me. God cares for me. God will take care of me. God will provide for me. And I don't box God into how he ought to do what he I, I, I need a couple more amens. Come on, y'all. Don't box God into how God was going to do. Now, now this is going to mess you up. This is going to mess you up. Because here's the new thing that God is really doing that I want us to understand, right? And I'm going to just say it this way. The new thing is this. His expectation is that we praise him. Y'all don't get that yet. Let me help you with this. He works on our behalf so we can praise him for who he is, not for what he what? Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Look at wait, wait, picture where you're seeing all that in the text. Look at the text. Look with me. Look with me at what he says. Let me read verse 19. I'm doing a new thing. It springs up, and you don't even see it. He says, I'm making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the water. So in case y'all missing this, let me start with an illustration of the animal kingdom. Notice what he says. The wild beasts will what? Honor me and the jackals and the ostrich, okay? Um, for I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. Now, let me work this carefully. The problem with you not getting what I'm trying to understand is the English translation of that word honor. If you were to do the, the work in the text, here's what the root of that word is. And this is going to get y'all. The root of that word is the word kabod. My worshipers know where I'm going. Here's what he says. I'm doing a new thing. And the animal kingdoms have sense enough to give me glory. Not for what I do, but because of. So they don't have to worry about nothing 
because they kabod me for who I am, I stay in default mode with them. And here's what kabod means. They give me glory. Come on. They give me honor. They have sense enough every morning to sing my praise and to exalt me for who I am. Come on, I need somebody in here. And because of that, my default mode is I always provide for them whenever they find themselves in captivity. It's not about the deliverance, but it's about the worship. Let me go here with you. In the book of Exodus, in captivity, the people stopped praising God and they started serving Pharaoh because of how Pharaoh had them. So they hung up their worship and they gave it all up and they stopped. And God said, no, 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 no. So he comes and he delivers them so they can worship him. So they put it back on for a little while. Y'all not getting this? And then they took it off and they found themselves in captivity again. And God said, listen, this time, that pattern of putting it on and taking it off. God, I wish I had somebody in here. It's got to stop. So I'm going to do it differently. I'm doing a completely different thing. So here's what it looks like. You notice with the animal kingdom, there is no such thing as captivity for them because they don't take off and put on. They always keep me on. I wish I had somebody here. Then all of a sudden you're in exile, you're in captivity, and you're in bondage in Babylon, and you did the same thing again. You've taken me off because Nebuchadnezzar won't let you worship me. The temple has been destroyed, and you stopped worshiping me. Here is the new thing. The temple is not a building. The temple is not a place that you go. Come on. The temple is who you are and where I dwell. I wish I had somebody in me. The animal kingdom have sense enough not to realize the temple comes on and comes off. So they worship. I wish I had somebody in here. And then look at the text. Look at the text. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Look at the text. The text says this. The text that says, verse 21, the people whom I formed for myself, that they may declare my what? Y'all know. Y'all whispered that. Yeah. That they may declare my what? Praise. That they may declare my what? Y'all know this word. You've written songs about it. It's the Hebrew word tahilah. And here's what tahilah means, right? It means, let me just show y'all. Let me show y'all. Don't think I'm making stuff up. It's, it's the Hebrew word, and it refers to praising a deity, to sing a song, to shouting. Listen to this. A sacred formula. Let me help you. Our country is divided because some people choose not to take a lot of flag. Oh, y'all not getting this. And some choose to. Here's what that meant. When I was in grade school, they would call us all into a assembly. I went to a Catholic school. And here's what we would do every morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here's what I never did. I never said it in my mind. I opened my mouth. Y'all. I opened my mouth and I shouted, listen to this, the sacred formula. I press allegiance to the flag. Y'all not hearing me. Come on, y'all got to get this. So here's what God says. God says, I'm setting you free. Not so you can come to church. And, and, and the premise of Tahila, it has to do with congregational coming together. Not so much me in my individual closet, but it's when I come together as a body of believers, the excitement I show, the praise that I give, the glory. Listen to this. Not because of what God did, but because of you get it, yeah. Because of who he is. So I Tahila him and I cannot keep silent. Here's what he says. If you want to heal me, the what? Y'all know it. The what? The what? He did not create the rocks for praise. He created you. He created me. Here's the difference between you and I and the animal kingdom in 2019. The best the animals can do is barak or kabod. 
They can't get to Halee, to Leah, cause to Hila, cause they can't say God. Yeah. They can't say Jesus. Yeah. They can't say Hallelujah. Yeah. They can't say glory. Yeah. They can't say thank you. Yeah. They can't say praise the Lord. Yeah. They can't say thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And here's what David said. Let everything that has breath do what? Praise the Lord. We were created for praise. Yeah. 2018, we were silent because we were waiting for God to do something so we could celebrate his hand. 2019, whether he does it or not, he's still God all by himself. And we tell him for who he is. And in the praise, God goes in default mode and provides for himself. I wish I had somebody in here. I wish I had. I wish I had somebody in here. So watch this. The new thing God is doing is this. He was releasing his people from freedom, for freedom to praise him. Why? Because they were created for such. So don't miss the text. They weren't delivered yet. In exile, in Babylonian captivity. Here's Isaiah's prophecy. Hey, y'all, don't make the mistake they did in Egypt. They waited till they got out. Then they started praising. While you still locked up. While you still in Babylonian captivity, say he law him. Praise his name. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Praise his name. 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 Why? That's what he created you for. And if you praise him, you won't be locked up. I wish I had anybody <laughs> anymore because he will do what he said he would do. Come on, worship team. Come on, Katani. Come on, stand to your feet. I, Pastor Steve, let me say this to you, brother. You're on to something. When you talk about a nation of worshipers, that's what God is calling for. And I'm praying that we will catch this. We will catch this. And when we come to worship, I'm, I might have to pick this up next, next week because here, it don't take all that. <laughs> when I was in elementary school, I dare not say it don't take all that because my teacher stood next to me with the ruler. Are you going to say it? And listen to this, regardless of how I felt, I pledge allegiance to the flag. I shouted that sacred formula regardless of my feelings. If we can learn to praise God like that, if we can learn to give God glory like that, we would be amazed, 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 amazed of what God's going to do. I know we're a little over time. Ministers, I need you to take your place. But here's what I want you to do. In your own way, go to God in prayer. Be patient with us just for a few moments. Go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer. As this worship team leads us in praise and in a time of worship, go to God in prayer. Let God speak. Let him have his way. Say, God, begin the year by repenting for not praising God the way we should have. Begin the year by saying, God, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. I will tahila you. I will worship you. I will praise you. I will open my mouth and declare your glory. I will not be silent. I'm not going to have no rocks crying out in my place. And I'm not going to wait to see your hand for me to worship you. I'm going to praise you in spite of. In spite of. In spite of. Pastor K, pray for us. Let me let God have his way.